If you had to pick one now extinct prehistoric predator to have here on Earth, which one would it be and why is it the Megalodon? I am your host today, Olivia Kozlowski. Let's dive right into part two of the top 10 deep sea discoveries that prove the Megalodon existed. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Mexican Sea Note. A couple of years ago, in the city of Madeira, which is located in Mexico, researchers found the teeth of several species of shark, some of which, of course, belonged to our fave, the Megalodon. It is believed that this city was once underwater many years ago, and this discovery of course only bolstered that theory. There were teeth found from three different species of shark, and there were also vertebrae that may have belonged to an extinct animal species, and even fossilized human bones were found, which makes it clear that there is quite a rich history in this area. This discovery actually came after a photographer was looking at the wall of a cave and noticed something strange. This strange looking thing ended up being a tooth that once belonged to a saw shark. Hopefully with further analysis of the area, we can find more about what once called that place home and where that fits in in the history and timeline of our planet. In our number nine spot today, we have the South Carolina discovery. Back in 2020, a woman was walking the beach in South Carolina when she spotted a gray chunk sticking out of the sand. She suddenly realized that this was a tooth and it was a lot larger than any she had seen before. She ended up taking a video as she found the tooth, which she ended up posting to Facebook, and according to her, the tooth was about 5.75 inches and weighed about 15.9 ounces. The area where she found the tooth was a coastal one in South Carolina, which was once the sea floor millions of years ago. The mud in the area is said to be quite the hot spot for finding ancient megalodon teeth and other incredible treasures. After the find, the woman was rightfully shocked, saying, quote, the tooth is just incredible and it's mind boggling that we now have a fossil on our mantle that is three to five million years old. Just wild. I mean, can we blame her? Not even the age, but how it's the fossil of the largest marine predator of all time. Pretty dang cool to say the least. In our number 8 spot today we have the seashell hunt. Back in July of 2019, a man was out walking with his family and their dog on the shores of Ocean Isle Beach when he saw something sticking out of the sand. You likely already know where I'm going with this, it is no surprise this was an almost 6 inch tooth that once belonged to a megalodon. The tooth itself of course is impressive, but so was the striking black root seen on the end. The family was apparently in the midst of searching for seashells, which is what led them to the tooth in the first place. In the low tide, they could only see the black root, but thankfully they took the time to flip it over, which is when they realized what it was. While North Carolina is often a hot spot for these kinds of finds, this tooth was found more inland than usual, which was quite a surprise. While many people either sell or mount their prehistoric finds, this family apparently decided to donate it to the Museum of Coastal Carolina. In our number 7 spot today, we have the UK find. Just a couple of months ago it was reported that a six year old boy from the southeast of the UK had made the amazing find of a tooth from a megalodon. The beach that the child found the tooth on is said to be quite a popular spot for fossil hunters, but this tooth is a very rare and fascinating find. You might be thinking, aren't there lots of megalodon teeth on this list? And the answer is yes, but finding one is still a spectacular discovery, and finding one in the UK is one of the most rare of all. Only one or two megalodon teeth are found on UK shores a year and most of the time they tend to be of quite poor quality. After reviewing the discovery, it was realized to be even more incredible because of how well preserved the tooth was and the fact that the root and the enamel are still visible. Many experts have explained that they've been looking for this kind of find since they were six years old and have never found one. One scientist said of the find, quote, he is handling the tooth of the largest ever predatory shark and one that will be of interest to the whole paleontology community. In our number six spot today, we have the family vacation. That six year old from the UK isn't the only youngster who stumbled upon an ancient shark tooth recently, as it is said that a five year old from South Carolina also made a similar discovery back in July of 2021. The boy named Xander found the tooth during a family vacation to North Myrtle Beach and was rightfully pretty ecstatic. Xander's mother, Kelly, explained that the quote, whole family loves hunting for shark teeth, that quote, Xander and my husband were searching in the swash during low tide when Xander spotted this one in the mud. Kelly posted photos of her son with the tooth to a couple of Facebook pages in an attempt to identify what exactly they had found, and that is when hundreds of people began chiming in claiming that they believed the tooth is one that had once belonged to a megalodon. They explained that while they have found other teeth, this is by far the largest one they've ever found, and while Xander wanted to put the tooth on a necklace, they will likely end up having it framed or maybe even mounted. In our number 5 spot today, we have the tooth analysis. So of course, as we've previously discussed, especially on part 1 of this list, 
most of what is left of the Megalodon's existence is teeth. This leaves us with quite little to go on, but that doesn't mean we can't figure anything out about how the guys lived. Teeth are certainly better than nothing, and they might just give us more insights than one would expect. Researchers have been using a new technique to analyze Megalodon teeth that aims at figuring out their dietary signatures as seen in the teeth. Researchers aren't just using Megalodon teeth and are actually examining teeth from 13 extinct sharks as well as 20 modern sharks to see where they fit in in the food chain as well as what their trophic level is or was. For a long time, scientists have been trying to figure out what exactly caused the Megalodon to go extinct considering they were an apex predator. Something had to go awry to cause their downfall and this study is helping to prove what some believe, which is that their disappearance was caused by food competition. Researchers are looking at the presence of different isotopes of zinc that are preserved in the tooth enamel. This can help them to determine what kind of animal matter the different species of sharks ate, which in turn allows them to figure out which sharks that lived at the same time ate similar types of food and which didn't. So far the research has led experts to believe that the Megalodon might have had some pretty stiff competition for food with another shark species at the same time, and this might be what led to their downfall. In our number 4 spot today we have Bone Valley. The Bone Valley region of Florida is known for their Megalodon teeth, some of which have some pretty striking colors. While this was once a hot spot for finding the remains of the prehistoric shark, the teeth are now getting hard to come by as access to nearly all of the mines and phosphate pits where the teeth were found has been closed off. Many of the teeth found here were on the smaller side and are said to have once belonged to juveniles of this species. This is exactly why it is thought that this area was once a nursery for the megalodons, which is super cool. Typically when found, megalodon teeth have a grey colouring to them, but some in this region have been more white coloured or yellow. In our number 3 spot today we have nurseries. Speaking of megalodon nurseries, there has been research into identifying these types of places specifically, and it is looking like there are 5 potential ones that have been found, and they include ones in the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Pacific basins where fossils have been located that range in age from 16 million to 3 million years. According to the study, quote, our analysis supports the presence of five potential nurseries ranging from the Middle Miocene to the Pliocene with higher densities of individuals with estimated body length within the typical range of neonates and young juveniles. It goes on to say, quote, these results reveal for the first time that nursery areas were commonly used by O. megalodon over large temporal and spatial scales, reducing early mortality and playing a key role in maintaining viable adult populations. This just shows us that these areas were extremely important for the species in order to feed and protect the younger members, just like how modern sharks do the same sort of thing. In our number 2 spot today we have the downfall. Like any scientist who studies the megalodon, there is also the pressing question of how did these guys end up extinct? What really drove them there? It is something that we have some really good theories and hypotheses about about, but no one can yet say for certain. Those same scientists who are studying the megalodon nurseries, however, are also explaining why these nurseries could potentially have been one of the things that led to their downfall. In the same study, speaking about these five potential nurseries, they also explained that, quote, ultimately, the presumed reliance of O. megalodon on the presence of suitable nursery grounds might have also been determinant in the demise of this iconic top predatory shark. Our planet has changed a lot, and it is possible that these areas that they really relied on to help nurse their young into adulthood began disappearing thanks to the changing climate of the earth. At this point, it is just another contender for real cause of the extinction of the megalodon, but it is certainly a compelling argument. Although the megalodon didn't survive up until these modern times, sharks as a class of animals have been able to survive all five global extinction events, which is absolutely incredible. In our number one spot today, we have the supernova theory. Okay, to cap off our list today, we have one more theory as to how the megalodon may have gone extinct. The theory was published by three researchers in the scientific journal of astrobiology and basically it suggests that it could be possible that quote one or more supernova about 2.6 million years ago may have been the leading cause of a mass extinction of a large number of marine megafauna which of course would include our buddy the megalodon. This theory claims that an increase in radiation from these cosmic events may have been 
strong enough to have a drastic effect on marine life. In a statement, one of the scientists associated with the study said, quote, Imagine the great white shark in Jaws, which was enormous, and that's the megalodon, but it was about the size of a school bus. They just disappeared about that time. So we can speculate it might have something to do with the muons. Basically, the bigger the creature is, the bigger the increase in radiation would have been. They went on to say that the radiation from exploding stars, which could have been as close as just 160 light years away from Earth, may have been too much for our atmosphere and the creatures that lived here at the time to handle. While water shields a good amount of radiation, the scientists claim that it can't block the muons. The researcher also said, quote, creatures that are used to being almost isolated from radiation would suddenly get a whole lot. They would be unlikely to have as good of a defense against radiation as land creatures would. And that's the end. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All righty. <clears throat>